Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another tutorial. Um, it's been a little while, um, but uh, today I just wanted to talk about some spring dynamics in Cinema 4D. Uh, once again, this is a topic I've never really talked about and I figured I could do a tutorial uh, about it. So here it is. Um, so basically we're just going to be talking about um, some basic spring dynamics in Cinema 4D. I'm not actually going to be creating anything special. Uh, just simply showing you how it works, uh, basic setup, and that sort of thing. And hopefully you guys can be creative and come up with something on your own. So the very first thing we're going to do uh, for the purpose of this tutorial is drop in a floor. Um, right click on the floor, go to simulation tags, and go to collider body. And the next step here, uh, for this tutorial I'm just going to be using uh, text for um, to demonstrate spring dynamics so obviously you can use whatever you want here I'm just going to use the letter A and I'm going to change this up here to A so I don't get confused and then I'm going to click on the text here command C command V or control C control V to duplicate it change the duplicated one to the letter B and the text down here to B as well alright so you can see now we have two different uh, letters here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate letter B uh, let's say 90 degrees uh, that's the wrong way whoops let's try this way and that's the wrong way All right, there we go. That's fine. Or actually, let's do negative 90 on the H rotation, and then on A we'll do negative 90 as well. Uh, so basically, what we have here is two letters um, facing each other. And the next step here uh, to uh, create some spring dynamics is to go to Simulate Dynamics and go to Spring. And right here, this is where we're going to designate which objects uh, we want the spring to be applied to. So in this case, uh, the letter A and B, uh, these two are going to be connected together by a spring. So uh, an object A, I'm just going to drop in the letter A. And an object B, I'm just going to drop in the letter B. And immediately, uh, you're going to see this um, basically looks like a spine come up in the shape of a spring. That's indicating that these two objects are, con are connected together. So we press the play button right now at this point you notice it's going to light up red uh, letting us know that no dynamics have actually been applied to the objects we wish to simulate so we're going to have to do that first so for right now let's right click on the letter B go to simulation tags go to rigid body and let's do the same for letter A so simulation tags rigid body so now these two um, objects or two letters have dynamics to them and this means that the spring can actually simulate spring dynamics so if we press play you'll see now that they actually uh, something happens which is kind of interesting um, of course this isn't all you can do you just have to play around with the the settings so like if I change the rest length to 50 centimeters instead of 100 you can see that they're they that's like a tighter um, they squeeze together tighter so if I do like 150 and increase the rest length you can see there that, that there's farther um, there's a farther distance between the two whenever it comes to rest so that's pretty self-explanatory there I'm just gonna change this back to the default 100 and then stiffness of course excuse me is a stiffness and I believe the higher this number is um, the faster it's gonna pull these together as you can see there that was kind of off the chart so the lower the number the less stiff it's going to be all right then obviously right here we can um, where it says apply we can apply springs to both objects or we can apply it to one or the other so if we set say only to a the B um, will remain stationary and then the a will fly into the, the letter B there as you can see there we can also do vice versa so only to B and that way the B flies into the A sorry if this is getting kind of confusing but hopefully you guys can see what's going on here um, one thing I could do here to go to a whole different get a whole different look is is see how the B is flying into the A like that and then the A flies off 
Well, if I wanted to keep the A still, keep it in position, all I'd have to do is delete this um, simulation tag on the A. Be sure I have that selected. Right click on the A, go to simulation tags, and go to collider body. And now whenever we uh, press the play button, you'll see that the B um, hits the A, but the A doesn't move. So just a whole other um, uh, different thing you can do. Um, I'm just going to change this back to um, a rigid body for now. Okay, and then also we have the different types here. So if we do like an angular, I haven't really played around with this too much. We'll see what happens, and that's definitely kind of odd. Let's do to both and see what happens. Hmm, that's very interesting. Let's drag this up real quick. All right, so you can see kind of like uh, what happens when you just kind of play around with stuff. Um, that's pretty much what you have to do most of the time is just play around with things uh, to kind of get what you want. As you can see here, we're getting something really weird. And, you know, you might be able to create something cool with this if you're, like, really creative or, you know, something like that. So that's mainly the reason why I'm making this tutorial. But that's pretty much um, basic spring dynamics. Um attachment and like you could hit, by default it's at the center of mass so it's going to be at the center of mass of the object but we can change this to like say polygon point uh, you'll get a different look there um, point selection so if you designated a point <clears throat> that's where the spring will attach to offset it um, this is basically allowing you to put it wherever you want more or less and you know if we play it so you get something completely different uh, so that's basically the basic um, you know some basic spring dynamics there um, hopefully that was helpful for you guys alright so I figured I'd basically um, talk about some suspension dynamics since this kinda ties into spring dynamics as well so let's go back up to simulate let's go to dynamics uh, let's go to connector and let's change the type from hinge to wheel suspension and what I'm going to do here is go back up to the floor drop in another floor add a simulation tag a rigid body tag to this and basically what we're going to do here is I'm going to go up to the cube icon create a cube let's drag it up a little bit um, whoops not that. Let's drag the cube up a little bit. All right, and then I'm just going to duplicate the cube. So copy and paste it, and then I'm going to scale this second cube down a little bit, and then I'm going to drag it down some to about right there. All right, and then um, go back into the connector um, deal, and then just drag in the cube to object A, and then cube point one into object B. And let's go ahead and play this real quick. Or actually, we have to apply some simulation tags to the cube. So go to the cube, simulation tags, rigid body. Go to this cube, simulation tags, rigid body. And let's play this and see what we got. All right, so that's kind of an interesting effect there. Um, you can see it kind of bounces. Um, now, what we could do is we could increase the stiffness of this to, say, 3. And the higher this value, uh, the more stiff it's going to be. So you can see there it just kind of bounces up and down and whatnot. Um, we could change the suspension rest angle. So if we increase that value, you can see it's going to be a shorter uh, rest length. If we decrease this value, it should become longer. Okay, so you can see there it rests at a longer distance. Um, we could check off ignore collisions so that these two cubes actually collide with each other if they come in close proximity but you can kinda of see how this bounces like so which kinda of creates an interesting effect um, once again like I said before this is all about kinda of playing with um, you know playing with the settings and whatnot um, let's see I'm trying to think here so it just kinda of turns over after a while but something kinda of interesting uh, let's increase the damping here and see what happens all right, so it dampens it quite a bit. Now, if we change this to 0%, it should bounce a little bit more. All right, so you can see it's definitely a lot more bouncy there. But 
kind of a neat effect and obviously like I said before if you're creative and have any ideas you might be able to uh, come up with something kind of neat uh, using this uh, feature in Cinema 4D so this is just a basic rundown um, kind of how this works um, you know of course you can go up here and change the type to like a slider and I'm not sure what's gonna happen now but okay nothing much um let's see you got hinges and all kinds of stuff it's basically the same principle of connecting two objects together an object A and an object B and then going from there so <clears throat> let's see if we go to ragdoll let's see what happens here alright so the two objects are connected and then this one cube just kinda hangs freely by itself which is uh, kind of interesting, but uh, that's the basic rundown. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I'm just showing you some basic things that I've never talked about in Cinema 4D that might help you in some of your projects or you might be able to use to your advantage. Um, so I think that'll do it for this tutorial. If this helped you out, if, it, if you learned something new, uh, please leave a like down below. Uh, please comment. I'd really appreciate it. And um, Thank you guys for taking the time to watch this if you made it this far, and I will see you guys later. Peace out.